Hello, I'm Amber Zeeb, Vice President of Employee Experience at AYA Healthcare. AYA Healthcare is committed to bringing you expert perspectives on issues related to diversity, mental health, equity, and more. Thanks to the generosity of our employees, our company culture has always been rooted in giving back. We believe access to healthcare, food security, safe shelter, education, and equity are basic human rights. Our goal is simple, equality for all. But social issues are complex, challenging to solve, and require long-term investment. They require study. That's why we're partnering with UC San Diego to bring you engaging and insightful thought pieces. Today, we'll hear from Dr. Janice Jenkins, the Director of the Center for Global Mental Health at UCSD. As Dr. Jenkins and her colleagues believe, there can be no health without mental health. She examines the meaning of culture and how it plays into mental health and awareness. She'll discuss the stigma and discrimination around mental illness and how by listening and learning, we can help erase that stigma. Let's get started. Greetings. I'm Dr. Janice Jenkins, Professor of Anthropology and Psychiatry and Director of the Center for Global Mental Health at UC San Diego. For over three decades now, my interdisciplinary teams and I have conducted NIH-sponsored research on culture, mental health, and well-being among culturally diverse populations. Recently, it's been exciting to see the growing momentum to make mental health a global priority for all persons worldwide. This is important since mental health, no different than physical health, is a fundamental human concern. Mental health affects us all to greater or lesser degrees at different points in time. Every healthcare provider, along with the general public, knows a patient, family member, friend, or neighbor who has first person experience with mental health challenges. A rallying cry for providers, researchers, and advocates of the field of global mental health is there can be no health without mental health. And while this affects us all, there are geographic regions and populations that require specific attention in relation to diverse cultural orientations and social economic inequalities. Gaps in knowledge and awareness of these factors can contribute to disparities in healthcare and outcomes and satisfaction. To make clinical interventions and research more efficacious, equitable, and satisfying for patients and providers alike, we need to be knowledgeable about ways to integrate mental health into our practices. Often, there are implicit biases that impede these goals. There typically is a prioritizing of infectious or physical health concerns over those of mental health. In addition, there are two domains of influence that are particularly important for mental health. First, there are usually presumptions about cultural orientations of patients and providers as likely to be shared or divergent. And second, an inadvertent lack of awareness or knowledge that applies not only to cultural orientations, but also to the social context of patients' lives. Both of these domains have profound effects on mental health and well being. With respect to culture, what we know is that typically culture goes unrecognized. There's a great deal of confusion about what culture is and what it is not. In terms of what it is not, culture is not reducible to a variable, it's not an ethnic racial designation, nor is it a place, a nation state, or a people. Culture is not a fixed or coherent set of values, beliefs, or behaviors. What then is culture? Culture is an orientation to the world that is actively created and recreated in the process of social interaction. Culture encompasses meanings that are taken for granted, and while there can be cultural patterning, there is also significant individual variation. Perhaps most important of all, culture translates into what we pay attention to, what matters, and who matters. 
We now have several decades of empirical studies that have demonstrated the profound role of culture in shaping nearly every aspect of mental health and illness. These include risk and vulnerability factors, the content and the form of symptom presentation, the clinical diagnostic process, the subjective experience and meaning of the problem from the perspectives of patients and families, and the valuation of cultural worth in relation to gender. Why do we typically see a two to one ratio of girls and women with depression compared to males? Other key cultural issues include healthcare utilization, and perhaps most important of all, the course and outcome of mental illness. We have robust longitudinal data to show that outcomes vary widely transnationally and cross-culturally. In addition to culture, the second set of issues that contributes to disparities in healthcare outcomes are social, economic, and structural inequalities. Often, there's an inadvertent lack of awareness or knowledge about the social and economic context of patients' everyday lives. This includes household income and household composition, food security, neighborhood safety, transportation, and access to local health care. Finally, we need a working understanding of the local community in relation to ethnic racial composition and climate with respect to social harmony or social tensions. Also, as a matter of combined cultural and social structural features, we have the pernicious effects of social stigma and discrimination surrounding mental illness. Stigma is as commonplace as it is harmful to mental health and well being. We can only know about the interlocking sets of cultural, social, and economic features through approaches to healthcare that are grounded in both the clinical and real-world settings. In closing, I'll invoke Margaret Mead's vision for scientific and medical knowledge when informed by anthropology. She said, quote, anthropology demands the open-mindedness with which one must look and listen, record in astonishment and wonder that which one would not have been able to guess. Moving forward, Here's to engaged listening and learning, to grow our shared kinship, to improve healthcare practices and patient outcomes in light of substantial cultural diversity and as matters of equity and social justice.